Taylor El Nuri spent years helping the FBI combat Islamic terrorism, and he did it in the most daring and dangerous way possible by personally joining their ranks as an inside man. The work was so dangerous that Tamer El Nuri is not his real name. We can't let you hear his real voice. We can't let you know what he looks like, in fact. El Nuri just put out a new book. It's called American Radical, Inside the World of an Undercover Muslim FBI Agent. He recently sat down with us to discuss his life fighting Islamic extremism from the inside. Here's the first part of that interview. So to give us some sense of the lengths you have to go to protect your life, tell us uh, what you went through to change your appearance. Uh, uh, it was qu quite the process, actually. Um, I had to go to a uh, prosthetic uh, company who essentially adds a chin, a nose, a forehead, a ha um, new hair, uh, different skin coloring, it's, as you can tell, it's a little bit hard sometimes to move my mouth to properly enunciate, but at the end of the day, I'm sitting here looking like this, so it's a good thing. Yeah, no worse than Botox. So, <laughs> w w in your book, you describe how, com and I don't think you're bragging, it, it's, I think it's real, how completely fooled the extremists you lived among were by your cover. How did you convince them that you were one of them? Um, I, I study them. I mean, it's how do you make friends, Tucker, um, day to day, um, naturally, uh, the proper evolution of a relationship. Yes. You just try to inject yourself, create the proper persona, uh, we call it a legend, um, into that individual. But again, I get to cheat because I study their pattern of life, what they do, what they don't do, what they eat, what they don't like to eat, where they go, where they, what they do. I jokingly say when they're not being jihadi, right. that human contact. Once I have that, um, it's, it's really not that hard to crack my legend to be able to insert myself into their lives, to be able what to are some of the engage. What are some of the tells? I was struck in reading it how little, even those of us who kind of read the news every day, know about the people who commit or try to commit acts like this, what they're like personally, what they believe. What about them is different in the way that they live? Um, everything they do is extreme. Um, and that's, I guess, where the term extremism comes from. Yeah. So that's, in and of itself, doesn't make you a terrorist, but it's a red flag for me. It's multiple indicators, and that's what I tried to highlight in American Radical, is uh, it's not just for law enforcement and the intelligence community anymore to be able to know, to be able to distinguish between uh, a radical individual and a mainstream Muslim. I think it's imperative for us as a country to be able to defeat this enemy, to actually have a better understanding of what makes them tick. And there's multiple indicators. One in and of itself doesn't make you a terrorist, but when they all start to add up, you want to look behind the curtain. So what, I mean, the most obvious question, what motivates them? Why are they angry enough at America that they want to kill Americans, in some case, lose their own lives? complete and utter um, disregard for religion, but they take uh, what they feel is an interpretation of how to defend yourself. For example, the best way to describe it to you is Shahad's interpretation. Um, every major religious text Tucker has um, ways to defend yourself and so on and so right. forth, and sometimes those wording can obviously be um, harsh, for lack of a better term. But they take it, and they would say, for example, that uh, Shahab says that every taxpayer in the United States is supporting a government that's occupying Muslim lands. And these governments are suppressing the proper military uh, that, so they can't defend themselves with a proper military force. So um, this is the only way to defeat them is with terrorism. Strike from within, because they view it as a tool of war. It's an absolute desecration. It's not the proper interpretation of any religion, let alone Islam. So that is um, another indicator and yet a justification. Did you become close to these guys? How did you feel about them? Uh, I hate every one of them, obviously, but uh, my trick and um, others like me that do this um, is I latch on to something human in them. Yes. In Shahab's case, for example, here he is. He is a brilliant, world-renowned scientist on the precipice of curing infectious diseases. Um, what he offered to humanity 
uh, was so wonderful, the way he spoke to his mother, the way he supported his siblings financially. Those human parts of him is what I latch on to in order to, not, to at least be believable. So I didn't look at him with contempt and disgust every time we had a conversation or we traveled together. It's just so striking that a guy like that, who's not a loser, who's now in prison, but a guy like that would devote his life to killing Americans. It's just that's not the profile uh, and, we've come to expect. And you know what, Tucker? That's one of the main reasons why I wrote this book is Shahab Asagayer's story, his radicalization. How do you go from mainstream on your way to being within two years, one step removed from Ayman al-Zawahiri, the leader of al-Qaeda. Yes. That fascinated me because of the fact that I work in counterterrorism. but I think um, it's a deep dive into that terrorist mindset that all Americans should understand. Uh, to answer all the questions that you're asking me now, why do they hate us? How do they go from hello to, oh my God? 